Hello to everyone. Thank you all for joining me at this time. My name is Shavi Zane. First, I want to say Happy New Year to everyone who made it into 2022. Um, this is a beautiful time to be alive as, as this is the year of balance. The number two deals with justice, balancing out the scales where, you know, you pretty much reap what you have sown. Um, and so if you've sown good seeds, you're going to reap a great harvest. If you've sown bad seeds, then you know you're not going to reap a very good harvest. You're going to reap based on what you've sown. And so this is the time of that boomerang effect. So um, just be prepared for your blessings for those of you who have been in alignment and um, doing things from a space of integrity and love. And for those who haven't been doing it, if you've been doing a polar opposite of that, be prepared for what's coming for you as well. Now, this message that I have here... Um, I'm going to start off by telling you all about some uh, pieces of a dream that I had because this message in particular, I feel like it's calling me to come forward specifically for the chosen to speak with you all about um, false lovers who come in and cloak themselves as your soulmate or uh, another common uh, theme is the twin flame journey. Um, but I want to speak with you all in regards to those who come in and cloak themselves pretending to be one thing but really having another agenda. We're going to talk more about what that agenda is. Um, this message is not for everybody. It might be for very few of you. Uh, but, you know, whoever it's for, I just intend to bring the message forward. And if it resonates with you, then great. I'm hoping to help you along your journey so that you can release yourself and free yourself, especially being that we are just now entering into 2022 to shift the energy so that you are ready and in position to receive your blessings. So a dream that I had um, last night was in regards to, I kept trying to take a bath, y'all, okay? I was on a mission to take this bath, um, and I remember being inside of a house I feel like it was like I was uh, surrounded by multiple family members who I know in 3D are karmic family members, and they kept distracting me from taking my bath, okay? Um, and different things would happen, like I would go and clean out the tub, and by the time I got ready to go and take this bath, I would go into the bathroom, and the tub would be completely filthy all over again. Um, and so then another part of my dream, I ended up going outside, and it was a beautiful garden that I was in. And it was this beautiful tub that was just sitting right in the middle of this garden. There was nobody outside. It was just, it was a sunny day, a beautiful day, flowers all around. And I was like, wow, this is the perfect place for me to take my bath. It's like it was laid out for me to do it. And so I went to go get ready to get into the tub, completely stripped down. And next thing I know, a whole group of people came and they were setting up for a party. Okay. And so that completely threw me off because then at that point I had to go and hide myself. I had to go and get dressed so that they couldn't see me. And, you know, then when I came back out, I was like, okay, well, obviously I'm just not going to be able to take my bath. And so um, I ended up seeing butterflies, yellow butterflies started um, flying around. And I remember calling my oldest daughter over and I was like, come see the yellow butterflies, you know. And she came running and then I saw yellow birds. They started but very unusual looking birds. Like I've never in my life seen these types of birds before. I don't even know that they actually exist in the 3D. Even though, you know, this world is big, it's very possible, but... Um, maybe this is a, this is an experience that I had in a past life or in some other realm, but these birds were very unique looking, but they was a beautiful yellow and it was flying all around. Um, and so I just, I, I was like, okay, well, I need to just relish in this moment because I'm being given all of these signs and particularly the, the color yellow was being shown to me, which can deal with like prosperity, healing, um, enlightenment, that type of energy. And so... As I continued to walk, I went further down and I, the energy shifted. There was this huge monkey sitting in a tree. And again, this was the type of monkey that I have never seen in my life. Like it was very, I can't really even describe what it looked like because I've never seen it before. Um, but there was two of them. And so these people came over and they kept trying to convince me to pet the monkey, you know. And so the energy just shifted. It went into a negative energy. And then I woke up. So I feel like in terms of the dream, I was in pursuit to purify my vessel. When it comes to taking a bath, that's all about cleansing your energy, purifying your vessel. And so I was in pursuit to do that. But I kept getting these stumbling blocks in terms of getting to 
the ultimate goal of taking my bath. And even when I got into the garden and everything was laid out for me, it was like that's when even more people came in to try and stop me. And these were like strangers, um, people that I did not really know, but they came in to um, disrupt that. Uh, but even in the midst of the disruption, I was still being given signs and synchronicities to show that I was protected, to show that I was not going to miss out on my blessings, that these were just uh, stumbling blocks that was coming in to slow things down, but that I still needed to stay on track and still know that nothing changed in spite of whether they slowed things down or not. I was still going to get to the ultimate goal as long as I stayed focused and I did not allow these people to cause a setback emotionally or lowering my vibrations, okay? And so the message that I wanted to speak with you all about is in regards to these false lovers that come into your life because as the chosen specifically, if you all have already watched my um, message in regards to the enemy's agenda, the spiritual agenda of the enemy, when I was speaking on the chest and siphoning energy, um, there are pawns that are around you that will come into your life to deceive you. They will cloak themselves as being a soulmate. They will get you wrapped up in your emotions and have you completely attached to them emotionally, cloaking themselves as being something that they are not. All And, and meanwhile, they're actually drawing in and stealing, siphoning your creative energy, your creative gifts, your high vibrational energy. That's what they're doing. Because oftentimes when you come, let's say if, if you've experienced this or if you're currently experiencing this, you have someone that comes into your life, whether this is someone from your past or someone that you just met, and you have this immediate connection, one that is um, extremely magnetic, and in that moment, you feel that you can't get this person off of your mind. You feel that this is a soulmate. You've, you feel that there's something beyond uh, explanation about this connection, right? You feel like there's something beyond explanation in regards to this connection. I'm just lighting my frankincense um, incense. And this person, though, you find that they may initially be able to wear the mask and have you thinking that they're just as interested. But then they pull their energy back. So when I spoke with you all in regards to that message, when I was speaking on the potential energy and how people and how these um, these spirits or these people come in to siphon your energy, how the enemy does this is they have to first create a connection, a emotional connection. Emotion stands for water stands for emotions. So they have to create this emotional attachment. OK, quite often, if this person is not a true soulmate, someone that you have known from a past life then this person will have to come in and cloak themselves under the energy of spell work and dark magic in order to get this connection to actually form, in order to draw in your emotions to the degree where you feel um, that this person is, in fact, your soulmate, your divine partner, okay? So they have to first create the emotional attachment. And then from there they create the, tra the trauma. So the trauma has to be created through the emotional attachment first. The emotional attachment comes first and then the trauma is created, which usually looks like ghosting or it looks like uh, maybe they just completely stop talking to you or completely just retract themselves emotionally. They completely shift. The energy completely shifts and you're left there in this pool of emotions with this strong spiritual uh, attachment to this person under the impression that this is your divine partner when in fact it is an illusion. The entire thing is an illusion just to get you in that space where you're emotionally vulnerable and to, from there, the enemy siphons your energy, okay? So it could be like literally this person can be the one who has come in to siphon your energy, knowing who you are, knowing that you are chosen, knowing that you possess great gifts, knowing that you are getting ready to reap a great harvest. And if they're operating from a space like, let's say they're, they're a witch or they're a warlock, um, even they know at this time in the age of Aquarius that the veil is very thin when it comes to the spiritual realm and the physical realm. And so 
they use this against those who are not fully awakened or those who are still in the process of healing with the hopes that if they can siphon your energy, they'll be able to take your spiritual gifts and your spiritual blessings that are stored up for you and shift the energy in their direction, siphon the energy so that they can actually receive the harvest that is meant for you. And so you'll find yourself, let's just say this person comes into your life and they draw in, draw you in with their emotions. They might use some sort of spell work, especially if you ended up having a sexual connection with this person, then they'll likely use something like sex magic to really heighten the sexual connection and to get you uh, attached to them to the point where once they ghost the connection, you cannot get this person off of your mind. You, it's like a 24 seven thing. You can't get this person off of your mind. You're highly emotional. You're trying to understand the whys and the, you know, and, and what happened here. And so then you're in constant pursuit of answers, right? I think I got an eyelash on my eye, y'all. So you're in constant pursuit of, um, of answers, but your vision is obscured. So that's probably why my eyelash came, you know, your vision is obscured. Okay. And so it's this energy of you're not able to see things clearly because what you're actually seeing is an illusion. What you're seeing is a false perception of who this person is. They're cloaking themselves to be something that they are not. And depending on where you're at in your spiritual journey, if you have not fully healed from, let's say, codependent behavior or abandonment from your childhood or... um you just aren't able to see the bigger picture in terms of, you know, rising above the matrix and seeing things from a higher spiritual perspective from through your spiritual eyes, then you will be an easy target. And so these people, they, they, you know, the enemy uses these people as pawns and they come in with the agenda of stealing so that they can receive your blessings. Okay. Um, this is the card that came out. They know you're chosen. So these cards, I felt, you know, whenever I feel called to do a specific message, I always ask for clarity and I begin to write out various messages. So I have all of these here. Okay. This is the first card that's coming out. It says they know you are chosen. And so much of the time, whoever it is, if you are dealing with something like this, this person is very well aware of the fact that you are chosen. The enemy is aware of who the chosen seeds are. The enemy has always been on the lookout for who the next Messiah would be, okay? And when I'm speaking on Messiah, I'm speaking on uh, the, the, whole, the body as a whole of Christ consciousness, okay? Those who would awaken to their Christ consciousness, who would be the healers, who would be the teachers, who would be the leaders, who would be the ones to actually re uh, to, to, to build the kingdom, who would be the, the ones who create, who, who establish the blueprint, the ones who uh, create justice and balance here, the chosen. So they know who you are. And so when they know who you are, they know that you have expectations for a specific outcome. Because as the chosen, we all know that we have a divine partner. There is someone out there, divine masculine or feminine, that comes in to balance out your energy because the two of you come together for a divine purpose, okay? But on an individual scale, there's healing that has to be done for both people. And so in your anticipation of this person coming into your life, the enemy knows, you know, and a lot of times they, um, like when you go to the hospital and you're born, the enemy takes record of your, your date of birth, your name, where you was born, the time you was born, all those uh, four pieces of information is enough to look into your astrology chart and to gather information in regards to pieces of your blueprint. Yes, your zodiac sign, your moon sign, your north node, your south node, your um, Venus, and all of these things are a large part of your blueprint. No, it's not every facet of you, but it's enough information for them to be able to use it to manipulate you. And so they'll send in at a specific moment in your life, someone who will come in cloaking themselves as being your person when in fact they're not, but they know that you're, it's a prime time in terms of you might have, you might have healed yourself to the degree where you're just ready for love, right? Or you can be in a state where you're just in a vulnerable position and you're desiring love. 
The enemy is constantly watching the chosen. The enemy does not take his eyes off of the chosen, okay? And with that being said, that's why when, when you look into biblical text, when um, the king at that time, the king of Rome at that time was in search of the Messiah to see when Christ would be born, he hired in, like, like I told you all in my other video, he hired in three wise men. These wise men had the wisdom of the stars. They understood how to look into um, uh, astro astrology, astronomy, and to look into um, where Christ would have been potentially, where he would have potentially been born, the Messiah, the one that had been awaited on, the one that had been spoken about and uh, talked about for many generations back. So the king hired the three wise men from various parts of the world to come in specifically to pinpoint where the Messiah would be born because they, they've always needed to keep up with this information. So they know who you are. So they will send in someone who cloaks themselves as being something more, okay? And so I'm just going to pull random messages, y'all, because these cards, I can't really shuffle these because these are just random uh, cards here. What we have coming out here is energy harvesting, Okay. So they know who you are. And so when I was just speaking on siphoning energy, the enemy has to come in. The enemy has to siphon the energy. If, if the enemy is going to siphon anybody's energy, it's going to be that of the chosen because the chosen have a direct line, a direct line of communication to the most high God. All that is, okay, direct access. The only way that access is cut off is by you yourself, the chosen, okay, through conditioning, through lack of self-love, through low vibrational energy, through self-loathing, depression, anything that keeps you in that low vibrational state, you cut yourself off from that direct access. But once, you know, because we are now in the age of Aquarius, the enemy has been scrambling to find ways to keep its beast and to keep its uh, structure in place. And so it uses false illusions in terms of uh lovers sends in false illusions um to distract you to throw you off balance so that in that moment of you know grieving the loss of that person or mourning the loss or missing that person because you have such a strong attachment to them you know based on whatever magic has been done and whatever illusion has been placed before you, that's the prime time for the enemy to come in and siphon your energy because at that point you're in a low vibrational state. Why? Because your heart, at that point, you might be in a lot of pain. You might be hurting. You might be really missing this person to the point where it takes you to the place of depression. It depends on where you're at in your journey. If you are not in a space where you know how to address and, and stay on top of your emotions and transmute and alchemize that energy to keep you in a high vibrational state, then the enemy knows that, okay, this is prime time for me to come in and to siphon that energy. Um, and it just takes you lower and lower and you go deeper into this uh, obsession with wanting this person in your life, okay? And so it's all deception. It's all illusion for the agenda of energy harvesting. And so I feel like this has been happening across the board towards many of the chosen where people have come in and cloaked themselves to be your divine partner, your divine soulmate, but ultimately had the agenda of, uh, you know, playing as a pawn for the enemy or they're using it for their own advantage. If they have like, let's just say you meet someone who has their own business, but is failing because they don't have that divine connection or they keep losing out, then they pinpoint you. They know who you are, but still understand that the greater scheme of things, the enemy still knows that this person, this person is still being used to the advantage of the enemy, okay? But it seems like it's happening on an individual scale. This person, suddenly their business starts taking off. Suddenly their views start taking off. Suddenly their their music uh, starts um, being well-known across the world or, or so, you know, where it might not have been you know, it may have been very little people that was drawn to them before, but suddenly because of their connection to you and the fact that you are literally giving them all of your energy because you're missing this person or because you're grieving the loss of this person and your focus, your thoughts are all on this person damn near 24 seven, that person is able to siphon your energy and your creative gifts to use it to their advantage, at least for a time. 
because one of the worst things that could happen for that particular person who is uh who has that agenda against the chosen is for you to wake up to what's really happening and to take your power back because at that point not only do you receive back all that was taken from you but that person now goes into the negative whatever it is that they was able to receive to conjure up through your energy to siphon through your energy whatever uh, uh, abundance, whatever it is they was able to receive in that moment, power, spiritual gifts, all of that, not only gets, does it get wiped out, but that person also has to now suffer for what they have done towards the chosen. And so the, the ultimate goal here is to keep you in that energy. So you might have somebody that plays with you in a way of, it's like a yo-yo effect. They'll come in, take your, your sexual energy, because your sexual energy is very, very powerful, especially as the chosen. It's extremely powerful because that is your creative energy. And if you are wasteful with your creative energy towards someone who is not your divine partner, they siphon your energy through that sexual connection. Not only are they taking your sexual energy, but they're also taking your emotional energy as well. And so they have all of this stored up for them while you're over there depleted because they're, har they're harvesting on your energy. And so they take that and they use it to their advantage, okay? And so you'll find that you end up taking losses or even bearing the burden of this person's karma. Meanwhile, they're rising up while you're in this energy of low, you know, being low or in depression or, uh, you know, loathing, whatever the case may be, guilt, shame, okay? But some sort of obsessive behavior, that's where they want to get you at. So especially they, they're able to target and pinpoint those who have a, huh, let me see, how can I say this? Those who have either a, a current codependency or you have a codependent tendency where you are easily uh, manipulated into codependent behavior. Meaning a current codependency, you might be codependent on cigarettes, food, uh, weed, alcohol. That's very low vibrational in energy. And so if you're in that type of energy, then you're going to be an easy target in terms of these people being able to say, okay, well, I know that that's a chosen seed, but they have not been able to overcome this part of their nature. And so I'm going to use that to my advantage and to their disadvantage in order to siphon their energy and to even further play in on their codependency. So now not only are they dealing with the codependency that they were struggling with prior to that, not, not only would you be dealing with the codependency that you were struggling with prior to that person coming into your life, but you would also begin to deal with a codependent behavior on that person, okay? So they use that to their advantage. Whatever your weaknesses are, they use your weaknesses to their advantage. And I believe that's like the um, Bible story in regards to Samson who had the long locks and the, the woman, I forgot her name, came in and was, um, she manipulated him through his sexual energy, right? She came in with this seductive uh, Jezebel spirit and because he was so captured, I guess, by her beauty and her sexual essence, that was something that was enough to get him to let his guards down. And at that point, she was able to cut his locks and strip him of his power. And so it's that type of energy when it comes to the chosen and these false partnerships um, where they, they catch you in your weakness. They monitor you. Uh, they, they watch you. They know where your deficits are. And this is why it's so important to stay on top of healing, to stay on top of, you know, um, staying in alignment with the most high, knowing who you are, knowing how powerful you are, because the moment that you slip up is when the enemy is able to slip in. And you best believe the enemy is always looking for a crack. The enemy is always looking for an opportunity. You yourself have to be a host some way, shape, or form in order for this energy to actually attach itself to you. So as a host, that means that you possess some sort of codependency prior to this person coming into your life. And so this is why it's so important to allow yourself to be alone and to heal though from whatever codependencies you may have, even if it's you having a codependency on love itself, you may not have anything external to you like weed or food or anything of that nature. You might just have a codependency on having love in your life. And that, 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 um, that, that strong desire, that yearning that you have to have a partner in your life, 
um, become so overwhelming that you end up welcoming in an energy that can cloak itself and can create the illusion of being what it is that you've been waiting on, but in fact, it's coming in to just steal your creative energy, okay? So let me see. Yeah, this says wicked intentions, okay? So if you are dealing with something like this, then this person, they know that you're chosen. They came in to harvest, to, to, to take your energy, to use it for their for their um to their advantage or if it's a person that doesn't know then they're being used as a pawn to the advantage of someone outside of themselves okay and so if there's someone like let's say for instance someone is watching you they know that you're chosen they know that you have a codependency they understand how energy works but they do it from a space of darkness and so they can send someone into your space that will come in at the right time when you may be in that space of still dealing with codependencies because they've been watching you, like I said. And so then that person comes in and they manipulate that person because that person is in a low vibrational energy. They've yet to heal, so they're easily manipulated through dark magic and spell work. So they come in and they manipulate that person to cause them to manipulate you, okay, and so in turn, it's like this person is being used as a puppet for the puppet master who has an ultimate agenda of using that person against you to siphon your energy. You see what I'm saying? So I hope that makes sense to you all. But just know that it's through wicked intentions that these things are being done. Okay? It's through wicked intentions that this energy harvesting is happening here. So let me see what else is coming out. Um, yeah, plan to stop you from rising to your divinity. Okay, that's the ultimate goal here in terms of this person coming into your life. So they come to siphon your energy because you're like, well, why would they do this? What, what, is the, what is the purpose of this? Well, to stop you from rising into your divinity because when the chosen rise up, the wicked fall down. That's just how it works. The head becomes the tail. The tail becomes the head. That's just how it works. Okay, um, uh, that's just the polarity of everything, the laws of cause and effect, the universal laws. If you look into like um, things, I like to read like uh, the Kabbalion. It gives you a lot of understanding on how the universal laws work, okay? And so many of these people who are operating from a low, on a lower scale when it comes to using witchcraft and spell work, they don't generally understand that aspect of things. But even if they do have an understanding of it, they're still missing the actual key because what you possess as the chosen rising into your divinity, the key that you possess is one that is not accessible to even the person that has the most knowledge in terms of the metaphysical aspects of life, the metaphysical aspects of our spiritual nature of energy. Even if they have all of that knowledge, they still do not possess the key to that divine union with the source, the most high God, okay? That key right there is only preserved and given to the chosen. And so this is why it's so important for you to stay in alignment and to stay in high vibrational energy because these people, they are looking for the prime opportunity to bring down the chosen. That's the ultimate agenda, to bring down the chosen, because as long as the chosen remain asleep or they stay in this low vibrational energy, the, the enemy is able to maintain its power, okay? But now that we are in the age of Aquarius, the desire to stop you from rising becomes that much more, um, that much more evident, okay? Um, because this is the time of the awakening. And so everything that's been hidden is now going to be exposed, but the ones who are here to bring exposure to it is the chosen, okay? Once you awaken to what's going on and you see things from a higher perspective, you call out for righteous judgment, you call out for justice and for balance to be established, and you do it from a space of faith, you do it from a space of knowing, you do it from a space of personal power, knowing that you've been given the key to be the co-creator of your life and to shift the energy of the universe, okay? And this is what scares the enemy, this is what scares these people who have been operating in low vibrational energy or who have been doing things to manipulate others in order to get a step ahead, okay? They know that karma is here. They know that this is the time to receive that karma, and so they do things like this to try to escape it on an individual scale and on a much larger scale. So let me see what else is coming out from this deck, and I'm going to pull from my other deck. This says, 
a religious group involved, okay? So for some of you, these people is multiple people that's involved in this, okay? It's not just one person, it's multiple people that's involved, people who are well aware of energy, people who are well aware of maybe a astron astrology, they know about your astrolog your um your chart, they know who specific people are, who the chosen are. When I see religious group involved, this could be like a secret society. People who come together to work against the chosen and they target and they pinpoint who they want to go after and how they want to utilize because they know, uh, they anticipate the type of gifts that you possess. Especially, uh, excuse me, if you're already <coughs> on a platform and you're already expressing your gifts, like let's just say my specific platform, someone might come and try to target me or watch me and say, okay, well, she possesses this gift and that gift. And so uh, let me see if I can find out what her uh, weaknesses are. And based on the weaknesses, that's when they try to send someone in that's going to be able to play on those weaknesses in order to lower your vibration. And they watch you, okay? They, they monitor your energy, just like right now, I can monitor your energy based on pulling cards. So they might use this type of format, or they might have people that's actually watching you, family members that could be a part of this. Or if you're a part of a religious group and you find yourself surrounded by uh, snakes, then it could be that type of energy as well, okay? Religious group can be any type of group, okay? From the church all the way to the, to the hall, it don't matter what it is, okay? And so then they monitor your energy, they know when you are... Um, in your highest vibrational state and they know when you're in a low vibrational state and in that low vibrational state is when they feel like, okay, now we're going to go in to try to siphon the energy. Now we're going to go in to, um, to take, to, to energy harvest, to use it to their benefit. And this is another reason why a lot of times you hear things about like the, uh, these priests that end up having um, uh, perverted sexual acts with young children it's only because children are in that energy of innocence. They have not been, they have not been um, conditioned to the degree where an adult has. So they take the sexual energy of a child and use it. It's, it's energy harvesting through that sexual energy of the child, using that energy to their advantage because the child is still innocent. The child is still very pure. The child has still not been... Um, tainted until that pervert touches them obviously but they take that that innocence of the child and use that um to revitalize themselves or to give themselves more energy or more intuitive wisdom i guess depending on the gift that the child might possess but these people they know what they're doing in these religious structures this is what the enemy has been doing for for hundreds thousands of years okay good at least a couple thousands of years, uh, they've been doing this, okay? And so the ultimate goal is to, to take your energy. I'm going to take one more from here. Then I'm going to pull from a different deck. Mental illness, okay? So when I see this card of mental illness, for me, this is... Um, if you're dealing with someone who might have come in and they cloak themselves to be your divine partner, they got you all in your head about them, they, they gave you their, their love or they um, seemed like they was giving you their love and then they pulled it back, they ghosted the connection, but they took your sexual energy, your emotions, your heart, and then they left you feeling completely abandoned um, or took you back into that low vibrational energy of depression where you're kind of, you know, you're yearning for them and you don't understand why you can't get this person off of your mind. The goal was to cause mental illness. So in that, at that point of you being in at your lowest state of missing this person, that's when they come in with the dark magic. That's when they come in with the spell work and these types of things to further, um, cause mental anguish to the point where you, you know, it depending on where you're at, if you don't know how to bring yourself up out of that energy, it'll take you further and further down into depression. And, you know, that can get really bad, okay? But this is the ultimate goal here, is to make you, to cause some sort of mental illness. Because when your mind is not functioning properly, when things are off balance or your thoughts are full of toxicity or you're overly focused in on a specific situation that brings you pain, then that's when the enemy, you become the perfect host for these types of energies to um, to be used against you. Like I said, spell work, dark magic, 
um, rituals and those types of things, okay? So, let me see. I'm, I'm going to pull from this deck to see what's coming out here in regards to these situations. Again, if this is your story or if you're able to um, relate to this, you have message of concern coming out here. So, let me see. Message of concern. Somebody is concerned about a message. Let me see. What is energy harvesting? I want to clarify these cards that I've already pulled out to see what comes through. Energy harvesting. Change. Okay. So I feel like this would be that energy of someone coming in and bringing a lot of changes into your life. Maybe someone came into your life and then suddenly they just moved on. Okay, because you see someone that's packing their bags and this says change down here. So this would be that energy of someone coming into your coming into your life. Um and pretending to be one thing, but then possibly just moving on out of nowhere, okay? Harvesting your energy, taking your energy with them, okay? Because someone that comes into your life and suddenly just disappears, but you might have had, let's just say you had a sexual connection with them. Hopefully, many of you are practicing uh, a semen retention or a celibacy uh, so that you're not easily an easy target, okay? you holding on to that energy until you're actually connected with your divine union, someone that you trust, okay? But they, they take your energy and then they move on. Let's see, what is the wicked intentions all about? Wicked intentions deals with a message. So we got two cards dealing with a message here. Under they know you're chosen. So yeah, this could be them directly communicating with one another, okay? If this person, because we see that we have a religious group that's involved, and if it's not a religious group, it's some sort of maybe secret society or some sort of group that comes against the chosen. Because please remember, it, for some of you, it's like, well, this is this is too much to take in. Well, understand that this is, this is a big world out here. The world is big, but the spiritual realm is even bigger. It's infinite and it's never ending. And so you got the dark side of this thing and you got the light side of this thing. So there's nothing that is too far-fetched. But you have to step outside of the confounds of your own mind. Do not limit yourself to what the agenda is. You have to see this thing from a higher perspective so that you can be in a position to recognize it, discern it, um, and to create healthy boundaries for yourself so that, it's, so that you do not become an easy target for this type of stuff. Wicked intentions. What is wicked intentions? You got privileged lady coming out. So wicked intentions, there could be an actual female who, who is privileged. That's that energy of having everything in the material realm, but very focused in on materialism, okay? Someone who's very focused in on materialism. Or this could be the fact that they know that you are privileged. They know that you are chosen. They know that you are um, blessed and that you are set to receive your inheritance and all of those things that's been stored up for you. Those seeds that you have sown, they know that this is the time of, you know, reaping the harvest, okay? And so they can have wicked intentions of taking from you, or this could be a specific person who comes in to, um, to take from you, or they come in with wicked intentions so that they can actually create some sort of uh, material stability for themselves. So what is privileged lady? Let me see. Yeah, privileged lady is unexpected income, okay? So this privileged lady has wicked intentions. She's getting paid or paying someone to come towards you, okay? Whether this is a privileged lady or a privileged man, generally we don't focus on the sex, but for some of you, this could be a privileged woman who has paid someone with the wicked intentions to come towards you to cloak themselves as being your divine partner when in fact, this person is someone who is being used as a pawn to throw you off of your divine path so that this privileged lady can try to siphon your energy because this is probably something that she's been accustomed to doing, paying other people in order to create her own, you know, in order to create abundance for herself. Or again, if you are the privileged lady, the one who is just um, naturally blessed spiritually, um, and this person... Someone is coming in to pay another person who is not so blessed because you can see in this picture you have one person who's in a, a tailor-made suit and someone who's in like very, uh, you know, tethered clothing who looks like they are in need, okay, in desperate need of financial um, abundance. So, but I'm seeing this as this privileged lady potentially paying someone to come towards you who is desperate for money 
and their um the the intentions are wicked it's all about harvesting your energy and so this message could have been to send someone in your direction okay someone could have been sent in your direction a message could have been sent they know that you are chosen okay so message of concern they know that you are chosen and they sent this message to someone to come in for the sake of um taking from you so let me see plan to stop you from rising to your divinity what comes out there main female okay so there is definitely a female that's involved in this situation that did not want to see you rise to your divinity so what i'm feeling is that actually i feel like this main female is the one who wanted to come up against the privileged lady so i feel like the privileged lady is actually the one who is blessed the one who is to receive the inheritance and the harvest okay the one who is spiritually rich OK, and then you had this main female who wanted to stop the privileged lady um, because they know that you're chosen. And so they sent someone your way with wicked intentions to throw you off course. What is this religious group involved? Y'all just don't know the type of wickedness that these people are um, functioning in, especially for those who are still very much so a part of the illusion, okay? A part of the matrix where you're not able to see things from a higher perspective or you might not even think to ask for clarity because you don't see, um, maybe your your vision is too, is too narrow at this time, okay? Um, and so these people play on that because they have, an, they have an understanding of the agenda. They've been doing this. I feel like these people have been doing these types of things and so... Um, they target certain people. What is religious group involved? What is this religious group? This religious group is a uh, concern. Okay. Something about concern with this religious group where well, they should be concerned because now the truth is coming out. Okay. So you have someone here who is concerned within this religious group. What about this religious group that's involved? You got judication here. So somebody may end up Okay, judication is all about that judgment day. Okay, so whether this is actual physical court or spiritual court, please understand the spiritual court, <laughs> that's when you're facing the most high God. Okay, that's when you're facing the true karmic debt, the true karmic lessons that's going to come in as a result of what it is that you decided to do. Okay, so this that's why this person, that's why this religious group, whoever, this might be a leader of the religious group, whoever is involved in this religious group, somebody is concerned. Somebody is thinking hard, long and hard, like maybe I should not have messed with that when you damn right, you shouldn't be messing with the chosen. But see, this is the problem. They never anticipate that you will awaken and that you will take your power back. They never anticipate that you will catch on to the agenda because they've been accustomed to doing this for generations. <clears throat> okay? From one generation to the next, they've been able to establish wealth off of the ignorance of the chosen. But now... You know, obviously they haven't been paying the paying attention to the times, okay? Because we are in the time of revelation, the time of the reveal. We are in the age of Aquarius, the time where all things that are hidden are now brought to the light. So what is mental illness? What was this all about? Mental illness. They're facing judgment day. That's what's happening here. I told you all 2022 is the time of justice. The justice card in the in the tarot in the tarot deck is the number eleven. Eleven breaks down to number two when you add one plus one, and so two 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 twenty twenty two is the time of those balance scales. Two scales, okay. You reap what you sow. Things are getting ready to balance out, good or bad. So you got mental illness that says marriage here, okay. Something about marriage, mental illness. Let me see what else I can get in terms of mental illness. What came out, y'all got to excuse all the little grunts I be making, y'all. I'm getting up there. Mental illness says gift, okay? So, yes, this could potentially be, huh, it could be a married couple that was within, involved in a religious group who are now facing judgment. They are concerned because they're now having to face judgment for what they have done against you. Um, and they wanted to come towards you to create mental illness so that they could take your gift, Okay. This could be two people that came against you, that worked against you, okay? Um, let me see. One more for mental illness. We have here 
mature woman and thoughts right here, right behind that. So mature woman, this could be your energy as the mature woman. You was in someone's thoughts. They was thinking of ways to cause mental illness towards you, thinking of ways to come against you, to, to siphon your energy, to take your gifts from you, your spiritual gifts, your inheritance, whatever the case may be, trying to come up with ways to lower your vibrations. Yeah, look at that. Great fortune is right behind that. So they know that you're getting ready to reap a great harvest, okay? The Most High is getting ready to bestow a lot of blessings over the chosen seed because now is the time of balancing things out, okay? And so in your healing, in you continuing to plant good seeds and to do great things for those around you, um, walking in your divine purpose, you, of course you're going to receive a reward and a harvest for that. And it's going to be a, a, a reward that's plentiful. It's not going to be something that's small. And so these people wanted to come in because you had someone who was jealous. I feel like there might have been a main female around you. All. I'm just taking one more out of this. Look at that. Sacrifice, okay? Sacrifice. They wanted to sacrifice you. Foolish enough to think that if they sacrificed you, that the Most High God, this is how you know they don't believe in the Most High. That's the problem that these stupid people have. They know so much about energy. They know so much about spell work and dark magic and energy harvesting and all of these different things. But they know nothing about the Most High God. And because they're absent of that divine connection, they do not possess the key to really understand the mysteries of life from a much more expansive perspective. Okay, it is it is those of us who are chosen that get to be blessed with this knowledge. Okay, and so you got these people that come in. And they're just foolish. They participate with each other. They're working together, working together to try to drain you of your life source, life source energy, okay? That's what they try to do. They try to drain you of your life source energy and leave you completely depleted. That says exhaustion down there. They're working together to try to do this. But look at this, to try to cause stress, okay? And remember, I did mention in my dream I had dreamt about some monkeys, okay? Monkeys are usually that energy. If you dream about monkeys, it's like, that can indicate that there's people around you that are trying to cause problems in your life. And look at what this monkey is doing. Trying to pop the balloon while this person is stressed out, trying to juggle their emotions, trying to keep things balanced and, you know, trying to utilize whatever it is they can to keep things going, to keep from, um, you know, to keep from crashing and burning. And here's this monkey down here ready to pop the balloon, being, feeling entertained by it at the same time, okay? So it, it's that energy, they wanted to keep you in that dream state, that illusion when it came to this divine partnership, okay? This this false illusion of this partnership. If they could keep you in your head about this person in, in the background, they'd be doing everything possible to try to pop your balloon, to stress you out, to cause stress, to cause exhaustion, all of them working together to do this, okay? So it's like they're all sitting here doing this ritual together to um, whatever dark magic or spell work they was doing to create this illusion for you that there was something more to this uh, uh, connection that came into your life than what it really was, okay? Um, yeah, because see, they know that absent this type of energy, if you're not in this type of energy, you'd be growing, you'd be flowering, you'd be stepping into your consciousness, okay? This is what you possess naturally. This is where your divine path is leading you. And so the distraction is all about keeping you from coming into this knowledge okay look at this both of these we have integration so that's that um balancing out your own masculine and feminine energy staying balanced here and then you also have ripeness because that harvest is coming in as long as you stay balanced okay as long as you stay balanced internally you re you end up reaping the harvest of those seeds that you planted and so these people work together they participated with one another to try to distract you with this false illusion of this person who cloaked themselves to be your divine partner when in fact, again, it was a made-up illusion largely due to dark magic. Let me pull from this deck. Yeah, look at this, y'all. Look at this. Confusion is what came out. They came in to confuse you, to make you think that this was a divine connection when in fact it was not. It was an illusion. It was something to cause you to go into that space of abandonment, um, to lower your vibrations, to take you into that energy of depression. All, all in the meanwhile, they was planning to sacrifice you, to take your energy, to cause mental illness for you so that you wouldn't reap, their, reap your harvest. They wanted to reap the harvest for you, okay? But now they're facing judication. Now they're concerned. Now, and it's funny because now they're concerned because you're waking up. 
but they didn't have no concern about what was happening when they was in the process of thinking that they was going to take from you, which, which is your birthright, your God-given birthright. They weren't concerned about that. They was only concerned about material. But now they have to face, not only are you going to get back what was taken, but you're going to get back tenfold on top of that, maybe even a thousandfold on top of that. Meanwhile, they're going into the negative, my, times, times the negative, times the negative again. Okay, they're going to have to face some great judgment for what they have done. The scales are now being balanced out. Look at this. Dark magic and then the truth. They use dark magic to hide the truth, y'all. Okay, they use dark magic to hide the truth. Okay, because the truth was this person was never your divine partner. It was all an illusion and they played a role in creating that illusion for you to exhaust you, to, to take your life source energy, okay, to exhaust you and to drain you. To leave you lifeless for their own sacrifice. But this says what? No success. They have no success in what they did. They might have thrown you off for a time. They might have slowed you down on your path for a time. Just like I told you when I was trying to take that bath in my dream. All of those people kept coming in. You know, you know, dirtying up the tub and doing different things to try to stop me from purifying my vessel. From cleansing off that energy that I needed to release myself from. So I'm strongly feeling that you all need to take a spiritual bath, sit in some Himalayan sea salt, cleanse yourself, set your intentions, pray to the Most High God, light your candles, write down, I release myself from all negative energies. I release myself from all spell work, all dark, ma all dark magic. I release myself from all uh, rituals, witchcraft um, that was done against me. And even that person, that particular person, if you know who this person is, of course you do. I release myself from X, Y, Z and all emotional attachments, all sexual bonds, all soul connections, um, anything, whatever comes to mind, right? I release, I release, I release and burn it. Then you light your candles. You know, I am strong. I am confident. I am safe. I am protected. I create in my divinity. I, I walk, I walk in my divine path, whatever it comes intuitively, you have to listen to your own intuition because it's not really up to me to give you all word by word how to do this. You just pray for clarity and you do it based on what your intuition tells you you need to do. But I'm strongly feeling that taking a spiritual bath is really going to help to cleanse yourself of this energy. They were not successful in sacrificing you. And so this is why they're concerned now. This is why, because they know the judgment time is here. You have awakened to the agenda. And because you have awakened, look at what this says. You have been set free. Because you have awakened, you have been set free. And so now that you are free, now that means that they have to go into chains. They have to go into bondage. They have to go into spiritual prison or even physical prison. Whatever it is that they've been doing, only they know and the Most High God knows what these people have been doing against you. But it's really not up to you to become overly focused in on what their judgment is going to be. Just know that it is coming, okay? And this is why they're sitting over there concerned because that was their biggest fear was for you to awaken. But you keep on poking a sleeping lion, that lion is going to wake up and you're going to get your damn head bitten off. You have here financial victory. That's that, uh, that, that harvest that's coming in, okay? That ripe harvest, those seeds, those great seeds that you have been planting, doing all of those good works from the time that you was a child all the way up until now. This says, look at this, y'all. Hold on. This particular card says multiple enemies. Didn't I tell y'all? Multiple enemies. So this could be a religious group. This could be family. Whoever these people are, multiple enemies who wanted to come in and to cause addictions for you. Addictive behavior. Like I said, you may have had some sort of codependency at the time, whether it's a codependency on love or some sort of external um, uh, source to, to bring some sort of you know excitement or passion into your life. But now, work on clearing yourself of that energy. Clear yourself of this energy that these people uh, uh, attempted to send your way. Know that there are multiple enemies. And so all of them that was involved, the ones that you know about and the ones that you don't know about, is getting ready to face judgment for their actions. And if they think they're not, they're going to find out. This says karmic debt is returned. Okay? So they got to be fooling themselves to think that they're not going to actually have to face judgment. It's people out here that's stupid enough to believe that they possess the ability through rituals, spell work, conjuring up certain energies, that they possess the ability to escape their karma. But those are the people that are stupid. Those are the people that don't understand this thing from a higher perspective. Cause and effect. Okay? What you put out there is what you receive back. There's no escaping it. Okay? There's no escaping it. 
And people think, well, I'll go and I'll have this lifetime of having my material wealth and abundance. And then maybe next time, lifetime, I might have to face it. Or maybe not if I can conjure up some dark magic. You stupid to think that you can use this type of energy to override the will of the Most High God. It was already written that the chosen would awaken, that the chosen will ultimately, we will come into our divine partnerships, whether you like it or not. We will step into our divinity and walk in our purpose, whether you like it or not. We will be lifted up before our enemies, before those of you, before, you know, talking to those enemies. If they decide to come on my channel, I'm talking to you. We will be lifted up before you in spite of your actions to try to slow us down or to cause setbacks, whether you like it or not. And on top of that, you will receive the karmic debt and the judgment over your head, whether you like it or not. And so, yes, in the midst of all of this, yes, the chosen, we still continue to project the energy of love out there because that is our purpose. That is our calling. That is our duty to make love the dominant energy of the universe because that's what heals. Love is what overpowers darkness. Love is what destroys hate. OK, and so it is still our duty to operate from a space of love in spite of their actions towards us. But that does not mean that love doesn't mean that you don't expect judgment. OK, because judgment is necessary to bring about change. Judgment and justice is necessary to bring about balance. OK, the skills still have to be balanced. And so, yes, I am a strong advocate. I do. I, I, I pray for and I expect I know that judgment is coming and it's a necessary thing in order for those who have continued to operate from their ego, from their carnal nature, from materialism and from wickedness. It is a necessary it is a necessary thing in, in order to get them to heal and to understand the importance of not trying to work against the most high God's children. You got to be one big damn fool. OK, I'm going to pull one more card and I'm going to close out. Like I said, y'all take your spiritual badge, you step back into your power, you establish your authority in the spiritual realm, declaring and decreeing that these people no longer have permission to siphon your energy. They no longer have permission to step into your space, whether energetically, through rituals, through dark magic, through whatever it is they're trying to conjure up. They no longer have permission to consume your mind or your energy. They no longer have permission to slow you down. They, you don't give them that right, okay? This is all about you exercising your authority and your power in the spiritual realm and also in the physical. Because if these are people that you know personally, then yes, it's time for you to establish those healthy boundaries to release your energy from that person. And, you know, if you happen to send that person a Happy New Year's text, you send them a Happy New Year's in, a, in, a, in two fingers, okay? Deuces to you. Deal with your judgment. Learn and grow and understand that you don't mess with the chosen. What else is coming out before I close out? Yeah. Yeah. This says false friend, let go. That was a false friend in your life. That person was not real. They cloaked themselves to be something that they was not. It's time to let that person go and allow them to deal with whatever judgment. Why? Because the veil has been lifted. You see very clearly. So that's what I got for you all. I love you. I hope this message was empowering for those of you moving into 2022. We're not going to take that type of energy with us. Okay. You clear yourself of that energy. You do it now and you move forward and step into your divinity and expect that harvest to come in because it is rightfully yours. It is your birthright. I love you all and I'll talk to you all next time.